The Parable of the Burning House From Chapter 3 of the Lotus Sutra, which is entitled The Parable At that time, Sariputra said this to the Buddha, quote, O Bhagavat, I now have no further doubts. I have received the prediction of the highest supreme enlightenment in the presence of the Buddha. When all those twelve hundred who have attained complete mental discipline were still under training in the past, the Buddha constantly led and inspired them, saying, quote, My teaching overcomes birth, old age, illness and death, and it leads to nirvana, close quote. Both those who were still in training and those who were not thought that they were free from false views about the self, existence, and non-existence, and declared that they had attained nirvana. Yet now, in the presence of the Bhagavat, they have heard what they have never heard before and have fallen into doubt. Splendid, O Bhagavat, I entreat you to explain to the fourfold assembly the reason why, and free them from their doubts. Then the Buddha said to Sariputra, quote, Did I not previously tell you that all the Buddha Bhagavats explain the Dharma with various explanations and illustrations, using skillful means, all for the sake of highest complete enlightenment? All of these teachings are for leading and inspiring the Bodhisattvas. Moreover, Sariputra, I will now clarify what I mean with illustrations. Those with wisdom will be able to understand through these illustrations. O Sariputra, suppose there were an aged and extremely affluent man, either in a town, city, or country, who has immeasurable wealth, abundant estates, mansions, and servants. He has a spacious house, yet it only has a single entrance. Suppose many people live there, as many as one, two, or even five hundred people. The buildings are in poor repair. The fences and walls are crumbling. The pillar bases are rotten, and the beams and framework are dangerously tilted. Suddenly and unexpectedly, fires break out everywhere, setting the house swiftly aflame. The children of this man, ten, twenty, or thirty in number, are in the house. The affluent man, seeing the fire breaking out everywhere, becomes alarmed and terrified. He thinks, quote, I am capable of escaping through the burning entrance in safety, but my children are absorbed in play within the burning house and are not aware of the fire, do not know, are not alarmed or terrified, and the fire is approaching them. They are not troubled about their suffering, nor do they intend to leave the house. Close quote. O Sariputra, this affluent man thought, quote, Since I am still physically strong, I could take the children out of the house in the folds of my garment or on top of a desk. He further thought, There is only one entrance to this house, and it is very narrow. The children, who are immature and still unaware, are attached to their place of play. They may fall into danger and be burned by the fire. I should now tell them of the danger. This house is already burning. They must escape as quickly as they can to avoid being burned by the fire. After considering this, he urged the children according to his thought. Children, run out immediately! Although their father in his concern has given them the proper advice, the children are immersed in their play and do not accept it. They are neither alarmed nor afraid and have no intention of leaving the burning house. Moreover, they do not even know what a fire is, the condition of the house, or what they may lose. They merely run about, back and forth, looking at their father. Thereupon the affluent man thought, quote, This house is already engulfed in flames. If my children and I do not get out, we shall perish in the fire. I will now use skillful means to help my children escape from this disaster. 
Since the father already knew that his children were attached to various rare toys and unusual things that each of them liked, he said to them, quote, The toys you are fond of are rare and hard to obtain. If you do not take them, you will certainly regret it later. Right now, outside the house, there are three kinds of carts. One is yoked to a sheep, one to a deer, and one to an ox. Go play with them. Children, run out of this burning house immediately, and I will give you whatever you want. The children, hearing what their father had said about the rare toys, became excited, and, in their eagerness to get to them, they pushed each other out of the way in a mad rush out of the burning house. Then the affluent man saw that his children had got out safely and were sitting unharmed in an open area at a crossroad. He was relieved, happy, and joyful. The children said to their father, quote, Father, please give us the toys you promised, those three carts, one yoked to a sheep, one to a deer, and one to an ox. O oh, Sariputra, the affluent man then gave each child the same kind of large cart. These carts were tall and spacious, adorned with various jewels, and encircled with railings full of hanging bells. On the tops of the carts were canopies, also decorated with various kinds of jewels. These carts were draped with jewel cords, and hung with flower garlands. They were thickly piled with fabrics, and red pillows had been placed about. These carts were each yoked to an ox with a spotlessly white hide. These oxen had beautiful bodies, with powerful muscles, even gaits, and were as swift as the wind. And there were many attendants guarding them. Why did the affluent man give these carts? because the man had great and immeasurable wealth, and his abundant storehouses were full. He thus thought further, quote, Since my treasure has no limit, I should not give my children inferior carts. These are my children, and I love them all equally. I have an immeasurable number of large carts, such as these, decorated with the seven treasures. I should equally distribute them to each child without discrimination. Why is this? Even if I gave carts like these to everyone in the country, their number would not be exhausted. Why should I not give them to my own children? At that time, the children each climbed into a great cart and had an unprecedented experience, one beyond their original expectations. O oh, Sariputra, what do you think about this? This affluent man gave to his children equally a large cart decorated with precious treasures. Has he deceived them or not? Sariputra replied, No, Bhagavat, the affluent man only tried to help his children escape from the disastrous fire. He saved their lives and did not deceive them. This is by no means a deception. Why? because by saving their lives they obtained marvelous toys. Moreover, they were saved from the burning house by skillful means. O oh, Bhagavat, if this affluent man had not given them even the smallest cart, it still would not have been a deception. Why is this? Because this affluent man thought before, quote, I will help my children escape with skillful means. This is why it was not a deception. How much more so, since the affluent man, knowing that he had immeasurable wealth and wanting to benefit them equally, gave each of his children a large ox cart. The Buddha said to Sariputra, Splendid, splendid. It is exactly as you have said. O oh, Sariputra, the Tathagata is also just like this. That is to say, as the father of the entire world, he permanently dispels fear, distress, anxiety, ignorance, and blindness. He has attained immeasurable wisdom, insight, power, and fearlessness, as well as great transcendent powers and the power of wisdom. He has attained the perfection of skillful means and of wisdom. 
With his great mercy and compassion, he incessantly and indefatigably seeks the welfare of all beings and benefits them all. The Tathagata appears in the triple world, which is like a decaying old house on fire, to rescue sentient beings from the fire of birth, old age, illness and death, anxiety, sorrow, suffering, distress, delusion, blindness, and the three poisons of greed, hatred, and ignorance. Thus, he leads and inspires sentient beings and causes them to attain the highest complete enlightenment. The Tathagata see all sentient beings burning in the fire of birth, old age, illness and death, anxiety, sorrow, suffering and distress. Because of the desires of the five senses and the desire for monetary profit, they also experience various kinds of suffering. Because of their attachment and pursuits, they experience various kinds of suffering in the present, and in the future they will suffer in the states of existence of hell, animals, and hungry ghosts. If they are born in the heavens or in the human world, they will experience a variety of sorrows, such as suffering from poverty and destitution, separation from loved ones, or suffering from encounters with those they dislike. Although sentient beings are immersed in such sorrows, they rejoice and play. They are not aware, shocked, or startled, or disgusted, nor do they seek release. Running about in the burning house of the triple world, they experience great suffering, and yet they do not realize it. O Sariputra, seeing these things, the Buddha thought, quote, since I am the father of sentient beings, I must rid them of their immeasurable suffering and distress. I will cause them to rejoice through the immeasurable and limitless pleasure of the Buddha wisdom. O Sariputra, the Tathagata further thought, quote, If I proclaim the Tathagata's wisdom, insight, power, and fearlessness to sentient beings with my transcendent powers and the power of my wisdom alone, Without using skillful means, it will be impossible to save them. Why is this? Because these sentient beings have not escaped from birth, old age, illness and death, anxiety, sorrow, suffering and distress, and are being burned in the blazing house of the triple world. How would they be able to understand the Buddha's wisdom? O Sariputra, Although that affluent man had physical strength, he did not use it. He only earnestly employed skillful means to save his children from the disaster of the burning house, and later he gave each of them a large cart decorated with precious treasures. The Tathagata is exactly like this. Although the Tathagata has power and fearlessness, he does not use them but rescue sentient beings from the burning house of the triple world only through wisdom and skillful means, teaching the three vehicles to the Sravakas, Pratyaka Buddhas, and Buddhas, saying, quote, Do not take pleasure in living in this burning house of the triple world, and do not thirst after inferior objects, sounds, smells, flavors, and tangibles. If you are attached to these objects and have desires, then you will be burned. Leave the triple world in haste, and you will obtain the three vehicles, the vehicles for the Sravakas, Pratyaka Buddhas, and Buddhas. I definitely guarantee this to you. In the end, it will come true. You should be diligent and persistent. The Tathagata attracts sentient beings through this skillful means, saying further, quote, You should know that the noble ones Praise the teachings of these three vehicles that are self-directed, unrestricted, and independent. When they ride in them, sentient beings will enjoy faculties free from corruption, and also powers, paths to enlightenment, meditation, liberation, and concentration. And they themselves will attain immeasurable ease and pleasure. O Sariputra, those beings, wise by nature, 
who accept the Dharma from the Buddha Bhagavat, who are diligent, persistent, and wish to escape from the triple world quickly, and who are seeking nirvana, are all practicing the Sravaka vehicle. They are like those children who left the burning house seeking the cart yoked to a sheep. Those beings who accept the Dharma of the Buddha Bhagavat, who are diligent and persevere in seeking the wisdom of the self-generated one, and enjoy tranquility for themselves, who profoundly know the causes of and reasons for existence, are all practicing the Pratyeka Buddha vehicle. And they are just like those children who left the burning house seeking the cart yoked to a deer. Those beings who accept the Dharma of the Buddha Bhagavat, who are diligent and persevere in seeking the wisdom of the Omniscient One, the wisdom of the Buddha, the wisdom of the Self-Generated One, the wisdom acquired without a teacher, the wisdom and insight, powers and fearlessness of the Tathagata, who are compassionate, put immeasurable sentient beings at ease, benefit divas and humans, and save all beings, are all practicing the Mahayana. Bodhisattvas are called Mahasattvas, great beings, because they seek this vehicle. They are just like those children who left the burning house seeking the cart yoked to an ox. O Sariputra, that affluent man saw his children leave the burning house safely and arrive at a safe place. Knowing that he had immeasurable wealth, he gave a large cart equally to each child. The Tathagata is exactly like this. As the father of all sentient beings, he sees that immeasurable thousands of kotis of sentient beings escape from the dangers, sufferings, and fears of the triple world through the gates of the Buddha teaching and attain the pleasures of nirvana. Then the Tathagata thought, quote, Because I possess the treasure house of the Dharma of all the Buddhas, which contains immeasurable limitless wisdom, power, and fearlessness, and because all sentient beings are my children, I will give them equally the Mahayana. I will not allow anyone to attain nirvana merely for himself, but will cause everyone to attain it through the Tathagata's nirvana. I will give sentient beings who have escaped from the triple world all the toys of the Buddha's meditations and liberations, which are of one character and one kind are praised by the noble ones, and which produce pure and supreme pleasure. O Sariputra, at first that affluent man attracted his children with three kinds of carts, then later gave them only the safest and best large ox cart adorned with jewels. Moreover, that affluent man was never accused of telling a lie. The Tathagata is exactly like this. He tells no lies. In the beginning, the Tathagata teaches the three vehicles in order to lead sentient beings, and later he saves them through only the Mahayana. Why is this? Because the Tathagata possesses the treasure house of the Dharma, which contains immeasurable wisdom, power, and fearlessness. And although he is able to give the teaching of the Mahayana to all sentient beings, not all of them can accept it. O Sariputra, you should know that the Buddhas, with the power of skillful means, teach the single Buddha vehicle, dividing and teaching it as three.